some more of this uh, warble on a lot guy just because he left a comment pissed me off a couple other people left little snarky comments and didn't delete your, your garbage but you didn't make a counter argument about why life is so fucking worth it that you know all the victims all the suffering that's ever been experienced it's all somehow worthwhile because human beings have accomplished what oh that's right they managed to be uh, hungry and they've managed to eat and they've managed to get horny and they've had sex and um, what else have they done uh, except for lie cheat steal uh, <laughs> you know disgrace themselves in any number of ways um and nobody of course answered the simple questions i asked about you know what percentage of the humans on planet earth would you live their life um you know, like those simple things so i mean it, at least answer my questions if you're going to be rude and obnoxious then at least answer my fucking questions but no, assholes can't do that. Um, even this Paxi Guerrero guy thing, woman, whatever it is. I mean, just hilarious. You know, talking about, I lived in four degrees weather, and I, I had my head chopped off with an axe, and I, blah, 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 blah. It's just the same old crap. Like, um, you know, I mean, what, what, what can I, I mean, I have no honest answer to you. If, if somehow it's worth it to you, that's fine. It's not worth it to me. It doesn't even come close to being anything imaginable that I would say, yes, sign me up. That's the honest truth. I didn't want, I wouldn't want to live your stupid life. I wouldn't want to be a silly person who gets all gooey over fucking sunrises or sunsets. I mean, it's, it's inane and silly and stupid. What else can I say? And I'm just saying to you that we, the people who didn't ask to be here, have a right to say, fuck you, all right? Brainwash your kids. Make sure you brainwash them to be as ignorant and stupid and silly as you. And if you can't do the job correctly, then you have no business doing the job, all right? Then at minimum, I should be allowed to have you sentenced to prison or something, all right? If I get smart enough to say you're an asshole, you're an idiot, you had no right to do what you did because you had no fucking plan. Um, if I call you on it and can demonstrate that you had no fucking clue what the fuck you were doing when you had kids, um, then yeah, you should pay a price for it. Stupid bastard. You should be at least willing to. You, if you think you, I mean, you should at least have that much integrity. You're gonna play God. You should want just a little bit of accountability. I mean, you've heard about all these gods that people keep making up. They all have no accountability, take no responsibility for anything. And you're just mimicking their behavior. You're saying, I can create it and I don't have to be responsible. Because nature gave me the keys. A thing, a DNA molecule gave you a set of keys. And you're saying, because it gave me the keys, it doesn't matter who I run over. It's nature's fault. It gave me the keys. That's all you're saying. And it's pussy bullshit. You're going to call other people weak or, or um, um, well, I don't even know the, the rhetoric that they use, um, looking at the dark side. Well, let's, let's get to this good day, fucker. Yeah, fuck you and your good day shit. Fuck off. Uh, that was quite a rant. I suppose it was inevitable that you'd have to play the old bull, young bull. I mean, you're not, you know, you say you're this, this, this guy with this huge IQ and all, and you still haven't figured out I'm a year older than you. Still haven't got that one figured out yet. I mean, it's right on my channel page. <laughs> Whatever. Um, what is it with the numbers? If you can't measure it, then you can't manage it. Yeah, well, that works in a lot of things, and it even probably works for this thing. But numbers are always tricky, right? Because you got there's all kinds of ways statistics lie. And if you don't analyze the numbers correctly, you come up with bullshit as an answer. Now, we know, as a, I think, we could agree on a fact that most people would say death by steamroller is not going to be a good time. That if they could protract the death over a... Instead of, it's only going to last a minute, right? 30 seconds, you're dead. But who wants to die death by steamroller, right? It's going to be the miserablest 30 seconds imaginable, just horrific. You know, foot, feet first. Um, so, um, yeah, most people are going to decline that one. Say, yeah, I'd rather have another choice. And then we can drag the suffering out over days or months or years, and then they'll say, yeah, that sounds a lot better. Now, the, the numbers are the same. You have the same amount of suffering... But yeah, you spread it over three years, you're not even going to notice it. But you concentrate it into those 30 seconds, yeah, it's really noticeable. 
big time noticeable. Um, so the numbers lie. The numbers aren't really reflective of anything. You just can't play that kind of a game of suffering. The suffering is one of those exponential kind of curvy things. It can go in all kinds of hellish directions, like torture, for example, where one day of it, one day of hard torture, and you're psychologically could be ruined for life. That's what it does. It's so bad. But you're too stupid to figure that out, apparently. Um, um, you appear scared to do the math. What, again, yes, so you have to use the word scared to do the math. I'm not afraid of you or any argument you can make. You're the one who's not responding to my argument. You didn't answer my question in this comment. I mean, well, I asked answer. you a couple of direct questions. Find the answer. You couldn't figure out. They, they, they sound like questions when I said them. I think most people would say those are questions. Maybe you should try answering them. Well, I think you might be right. afraid to answer the question because there is no right Without answer to that question, is there? If you can see that half the people on been. Earth are complete assholes and you wouldn't pay, Without you certainly addiction. wouldn't want to live their life. You'd certainly pay to avoid living their life. And that would have to be your only honest uh, answer to the question, right? You're for honesty. Well, if you honestly Maybe answer my question, you're going to have to concede that you wouldn't voluntarily live the life of half, at least no. half the people on this planet. No, I, and would I, you really, I would you really to, endure I getting to, eaten by a fox I to, convert. to spend seven weeks in, in a kangaroo's pouch? Would you really do that? I don't think you would. All right, um, on the actual percentage of life suffering, well, again, no, who calculates it that way? Nobody calculates the minutes. They calculate the overall. And um, certainly a, I, I could conceive of it being worse, you know, to slowly die of cancer over, you know, a months or years. You can stop it's probably that, worse yeah. than getting eaten by a shark. But... Thank you. Um, who can calculate it that way? Because there's also this, this qualitative like aspect causes. to it. It's like sure. sex, all right? Maybe you don't understand this, but sex isn't just sticking your willy in a vagina, okay? It's more complicated than that. <laughs> it, 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 uh, for it to be a good experience for both parties, it's a little more complicated than that. Um, because we're emotional animals, too. We're not just going to calculate suffering. Because it shows your perceptual error. Well, again, you can call it an error. I call it absolute bullshit out of your mouth, okay? Like I said, if we had real, if we could monetize this stuff for real, all right, and people had to really pay for it, and they knew up front what exactly they were in for, I'm going to tell you that they would start, if they knew they were going to experience the next three months, chemotherapy, um, hemorrhage, brain hemorrhage, you know, vomiting, whole kinds of horrors. I can I can give you a whole detail of the horrors. I could spell it all out for them. Um, I'm telling you that most people would say, okay, they'd start selling off their life. They'd start selling off the sunsets and the grandchildren and a lot of other things. They'd say, fuck it, it really isn't worth it. All right, <laughs> really, if I can get avoid that bad thing, I'll sell a lot of this crap because this stuff is exactly that crap, this good stuff. It's just the satisfaction of silly deprivations and needs. It's a bunch of ego crap that keeps you people running the race. Um, hey, this part is the real annoying part. But man, I mean, I spent most of the video refuting this idiotic argument, and the fucker comes back with the same dumb shit. So, I mean, you know, he cut his IQ probability in half by, by saying this. Why do you insist on stigmatizing people who are depressed. So he's asking that rhetorically, as if I've accused him of stigmatizing. That's not what I accused you of anymore. anyway. Um, my argument wasn't that people who are um, anti-natalists aren't depressed. My argument was that they have cause to be depressed. It's a depressing philosophy. That's the very nature of it. The, the very nature of the philosophy is realizing you've been sold a lemon all right, you just spent $50,000 in an auto uh, dealership, you bought a car, and you've been shown it's an absolute piece of shit. So, of course, you're going to be depressed. If you just found out, you just built yourself a beautiful house on a piece of property, and you found out it's all 
fucking infested with dioxin, every inch of it, and you can't live in your beautiful house that you just spent three years building, um, you'd be depressed. That's right. And that's what antinatalism is. Antinatalism is a concession that your life is for nothing. It's a waste of your fucking suffering. That it has been, and it, it, it just is an absolute nonsensical gladiator war fought for no good reason so we can build monuments to absolute bullshit. And it's humiliating, besides being depressing. It's fucking humiliating that I have to even explain to people how ludicrous it is that we kill 50 million people in World War II so, you know, we can go on to iconize um, Hollywood stars and uh, celebrate absolute crap. I mean, the top ten TV shows are absolute crap. Um, so anyway, um, every antinatalist I've met is depressed. Well, like I said, I, I answered it in the video, and now I'm going to just answer it again. That that it can't be used as an argument against antinatalism. It's just a stupid argument. Um, the realization that your life is futile and stupid is a depressing realization. There's no way to get around that. All right? And the opposite argument can be made to you silly, putty, nonsensical little um, Teletubby drones. You sit there and, and canard and make silly excuses for life and then talk about silly things like the joy of feeding bread to a fucking wallaby or something. Like, what, what, how, how big a whoop de do do you want me to say to that? And so somehow that works with a bunch of you people who are desperate to find an excuse to justify your existence. But for people who don't need to justify it anymore, all of that tripe and crap means nothing. You can't use that as an argument anymore. You can't do your little kissing the baby bullshit anymore and pull that crap off, okay? It just doesn't work anymore. All right, I'm immune your little silly lies about how charming and beautiful all this crap is, because it's not. It's just an illusion in your deluded little silly brain, like some Christian nut, you know, rubbing their vagina while they, you know, kiss a, an icon at the church or something. All right? I mean, they're silly, and you're just this fucking silly. Um, okay, everyone bar Diana as atheists. Well, I don't even know what that means. I don't even know why you bring up Diane as an example of what. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, an erratic lunatic. Um, so anyway, <laughs> fuck you. So now I'm going to play the rest of this video. Yeah, I ran out of time. Memory on the, um, on the other, um, thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a 40-minute video, so I said, what the hell, but I'll play the rest of it. I haven't, I haven't listened to this, so this will be my first hearing of it also. This is my first time. Watching. Way to go, YouTube. I mean, I preload it, and now it won't play. I just hate YouTube. I really just hate it, you know. YouTube just sucks so bad. Now I just reload the page again and try again. I know it's somewhere around here. Something like that. And go back here, maybe. Nobody should have any children. But their aim is to have no life in the universe because the possibility of life. Yeah, well, look, um, you know, again, you haven't dealt with the fact that most people aren't reproducing at a rate sufficient to continue life, human life on Earth. So most people don't seem to have any urgency to do this populating thing. Now, maybe you could argue because they know the ignorant people are already taking care of the problem. But I really don't think that's a very good argument, because that's exactly the truth. They know the ignorant people are taking care of it. Do they really want to leave the destiny of the human race in the hands of people who are illiterate, who are living in shit? Is, is that really what people intend? I don't think they intend to that. I think they just don't give a fuck. And that's another reason to say this life thing really doesn't work out, right? Because we get all these neurons and all this intelligence and these fuckers can't even give a fuck. Involves the certainty of perceiving suffering, and I think suffering is all important. Now, I, I mean, that's pretty rude, you know. It's, it's like saying to somebody, well, oh, you had a marvelous life for X number of years, and then you were raped, 
And afterwards, you had a hard time getting over the rape, but you had all these other things that you did and you were pleased about, but nothing matters except the rape because you are defined by the rape. But yeah, well, things are defined by what happens to them, okay? I mean, under his, uh, his physical ass wear here, okay? Now it's in one piece and it's okay, right? And it could be like that for a long time, but if I drop it and it breaks, that's right, it's broken. It's broken, all right? It's, it's changed. Its fundamental nature has changed. And life experiences do that to you, okay? Um, you watch maybe your sister die or some other circumstance like that. Or maybe you watch one of your kids die. Um, in a bad way especially. Especially if it happens in a bad way. Um, yeah, and it's just going to live with you. It's just not going to go away. And you, don't, you almost don't want it to go away because you don't, have, you don't know what to do with it. You don't know how to, how to fix it. How, how do you fix the injustice of it? How would you fix the injustice of, say, if somebody rapes your daughter and a court finds the guy innocent and you know he's fucking guilty, but they found him innocent because they blew it, they misprosecuted. So what's your solution? Yeah, you don't have one, right? And you say it's okay, though. You could just live with the injustice. You could just say it's okay. So what? The system didn't work. My daughter's ruined. It's okay, though. It doesn't matter. I mean, fuck you. This is silly. This is nonsensical. So, yeah, you, there's no amount of it that you can't get over. So I'll ask you another question and see if you have the balls to answer it. How many people would have to die in World War III for you to say, yes, the human experiment is just a little too ludicrous? How many have to die? Badly, okay? Not, not instantly. You know, slowly, concentration camps, war ditches, war wounds, um, and all that entails you know, kids with their parts blown off, all that kind of bullshit. How many have to be ruined uh, for you to say, okay, yeah, it really was probably a mistake, but, you know, we should have done away with this nonsense. So give me a number, fucker. So we stopped killing each other. minutes of suffering is predominant to everything else that happened. It's, um, it's really rude to appropriate, and, and I would say misappropriate. Well, so whatever. It's, I mean, it's nonsensical for you to say it's rude. We just spent $2 trillion fighting stupid, idiotic wars because people got killed in 9-11, most of them instantaneously. That's the truth of it. They died instantaneously, most of them. I mean, some died hard jumping out of the building, but even those people all died within an hour of the incident. So the worst case scenario was point not, 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 not one of their life experience. So why the fuck the big fucking reaction? Why the fuck should we care? Why the fuck should we care, right? We'll just say, why not let drunk drivers drive on the road? Because if they kill, they usually, their victims are killed usually pretty quickly. They're plowing to them at 70 miles an hour. And um, so what do we, yeah, it's just not, 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 not percentage of their life experience. So why, it's a, why the big deal? We probably save them from cancer. We can make some kind of idiotic um, crap logic like that. And like somehow the game is all worth it then. I mean, why don't you just suggest yeah, that we create aliens, since there are no real well, aliens. Why don't we just build aliens and have them farm us, all right? And they kill us when we're 25 years old. Instantly, you know, very quickly, just without us even knowing. All right, so let's come up with that scenario. So they can farm us, and we'll we'll, we'll give them a digestive system of kind of some kind. They can chew on us and eat us, just to make the whole theater really cool. Um, you know, and shit us out. <laughs> you know, and then we drive our cars with the shit or something. That'd be really cool. Um, you know, they feed it back to us in little green potato chips. How about that? Um, so that would be okay with you, right? Because the suffering is not, 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 not percentage of the existence. Now, you know, you're just a fucking God botherer. And your God is called DNA. Alright? You're just in love with life. Life is life. Life is life. That's all you're doing. You're just a fucking Teletubby talking infantile drivel. You don't have a fucking no argument life. that life we is doing have anything. Like you. But exactly what uh, uh, you're just being a drone to the mission statement of a DNA molecule, where the only mission statement is survival of the fittest, survival of the most survivable. It's not even survival of the fittest. It's just the most survivable. 
the thing with the viciousest strategy or the most malicious tools. Bravo the fucko. That's what something with an IQ does. Yeah. Fuck you. Retard. In order to light the dividing point to show up your position that they shouldn't by anybody alone because you're miserable. Yeah, another bullshit argument again. I mean, what's the incentive to be miserable exactly? I don't get it. What is it? Why should somebody who's miserable give a fuck about the future? That's not what the, the, the average depressed person who's not anti-natalist is generally speaking just worried about themselves, right? They don't care about the future. Why would they make an argument about somebody else's well, reproductive behavior? Well, that's right. They'd only make the argument if they were first the offended that you fuckers thought you could play this game with them, that you throw them into a ratty nest, a world in chaos, um, and uh, you subject them to this very high risk of all kinds of physical shit that can fall on them, all kinds of risk elements, like getting raped, um, and you just sit in your fucking dirty, stinking, ratten, fested fucking hammock and talk bullshit, like somehow it all supposed to make sense to anything with a little bit of intelligence. No, it makes no sense at all. Stupid fuck. It's kind of where any nihilism seems to be coming from. Uh, it's it's hyper nihilism. Yeah, it? this is where I think I ran out the last time. Yeah, it's it's exactly the opposite. Again, there's nothing in nihilism, by the way, uh, that has anything to do with giving a fuck about the future. Right? That's not nihilism, idiot. Um, and everything about anti-natalism isn't about somehow undoing people who already exist. All right, Jack Kevorkian lived to be 78 years old, something like that, um, and he fought the fight because he knew that's the best he can do. But he would rather not have been. If it was his choice, he wouldn't have pressed the go button. All right, and that's a fact. And he doesn't see any point in somebody else pressing that go button. Why should you have the right to impose it? Again, because the DNA molecule gave you the keys, and you're going to use that as your excuse and your cop-out. You're not going to take responsibility. If one of your kids had been born with cerebral palsy or with their, their, their encephalitis or something, you would have subjected them to the medical process, uh, years, decades maybe, of surgeries and, 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 and suffering. Why? Because that's your stupid mission statement? Fuck you. I say anti-nihilism, um, and there again we're going to get into a bit of dispute. A lot of anti-nihilists have suggested that nihilism means nothing matters, and that's absolutely wrong. Nihilism is the idea of reducing everything to nothing. Well, that's well, how exactly is there a distinction there? Nothing really matters, or you reduce everything to nothing. Now, I, I think that's exactly the same statement, shithead. I mean, if something's, if everything's reduced to nothing, then nothing matters, right? Because nothing can matter. I mean, if there's nothing, nothing can matter. Oh, God, you're stupid. What the French nihilistic philosophers taught Pol Pot, and that's why Pol Pot tried to reduce everything to nothing when he went bananas with the Khmer Rouge in, in Cambodia. Well, whatever that means. Reduce everything to nothing? No, he wanted to reduce everything to a racial diagram um, and uh, create an agrarian um, civilization or whatever the right term for that is um, you know it's the simple life right. that, that's why he, he burned everybody's right shoe and stopped by the left shoe in the warehouse and he, he, he killed anybody who had any education all the teachers and scientists he got rid of all of them he, moved it. Well, he got rid of the pollution quote unquote, just like a lot of other dictators. So what, I mean, what does, you're going to say that Pol Pot was an anti-natalist now? Is that going to be your fucktarded argument? So the guy is, is racially discriminating and, and is anti-education. And so you're going to, you're going to, you're going to talk about being rude and talking about appropriating other people's suffering. Now you're, you're appropriating all the deaths from Pol Pot and trying to claim they have something to do with nihilism or anti-natalism? You fucking weasel. Everybody out of the cities and into the jungle because he was reducing everything to nothing. 
that after reducing it to nothing, open. So, so who buys this argument? Who, who, what is this crock shit of crap? You don't think he had a plan? Is that what you're saying? His plan was to evaporate all the people? I don't think so, shithead. But if you could rebuild and get a better word. The anti-natalists don't want to rebuild. They are hyper nihilists. <laughs> Whatever. Again, what does nihilism have to do, nihilism, with, um, uh, again, giving a shit about the welfare of others? It's not part of the philosophy. Nihilism philosophy is everything suffering doesn't matter somehow. And so it doesn't matter what your suffering doesn't matter, their suffering doesn't matter. You feel like raping and pillaging, go the fuck ahead, it doesn't matter. Right. Which is pretty sad. You know, they're also very sensitive people who don't want to see suffering in the world and they're prepared to have no kids in order to further that end. Well, again, the, that, the having no kids thing, I didn't have to be an anti-natalist to, to know I had no interest in playing God and being responsible for a risk experiment. I already knew that I wasn't going to like play with matches next door uh, at my next door neighbor's house. I wasn't going to go walk over to my neighbor's house and start throwing matches around. Yeah, I wasn't going to take a risk with somebody else's welfare. I, I mean, I could figure that out when I was seven fucking years old. I already knew the equation. I already knew this is done sloppy, and there's no way I was going to be do a slob. So, uh, yeah. I don't agree with them, but I understand where they're coming from, and I like them. Yeah, so you'll insult them. Fuck you. It took me a while to like them because um, I thought they would be dangerous for people who were depressed to be exposed to on the grounds that they would be pretty much counseling towards suicide. Yeah, and and again, that and that to to by your standards, right? Again, it's to your standards. So somehow you think you have the right philosophy, yeah, and you haven't defended it with anything. But might makes right, okay? Because most people are deluded assholes, and we've seen the behavior of them all through history. We see what the deluded majority has created for us. Um, we've seen what the god-bothering majority has done on this planet. Um, and it was crap. Most of what the majority has believed in history has been crap. <laughs> yeah. And I'm one of the people who is very glad not to have committed suicide when I was 21 and seriously thinking about it. So. Well, again, so another example of another reckless asshole, in my opinion. So you know the risk. You know that you had dark times in your life where you thought suicide did. Yeah, makes sense to me because life is stupid. And somehow you recovered, okay, from your stupidity of thinking life was stupid. And something got, some kind of bug got up your butt that gave you this idea that there was some better purpose. And what did you do, though? You said, I'm going to go ahead and have kids, even though I know what it is to be in a place dark enough to want to kill myself. And yet you'll subject somebody else to that risk. And that's, what a, that's the kind of generous guy you are. Well, fuck you. I mean, I say anybody who has been suicidal and then decides to have kids... They have to be put right on the top of the colossal asshole list. You're the fucking nihilist shithead. I mean, you obviously don't give a fucking rat's ass about anything else's welfare but your own. And your own penis at the time. That's how enlightened you were. You want to go down? And uh, I'm also somebody who's had a stepson hang himself. And you know, I, I wish he hadn't done that. And I think an awful lot of people who've got kids are terrified to, to keep well, well, why do you wish he hadn't done that? It was only a few seconds worth of suffering, right? We're not going to count the misery of his life, the, the, the things that provoked him to think his life has no purpose and the struggle he might have gone through to, for years to, to try to make sense out of the idiocy that we call life on this stupid shithole. Um, so you'll mock that pain. Um, so I'm going to mock the death pain. I'm going to mock the meaning of the death. Um, so fuck it. Why, why do you... No, it doesn't matter. Not to expose to somebody who's canceled towards killing himself. 
Again, and, and you're going to disqualify that, that that choice. You're going to say that somehow you know what's in the best interest of people. And I say that's just bullshit, especially when you haven't made an argument that is anything near rational to sit there and show me one fucking thing that's worth it. Not one fucking thing. Give me the give me the explanation of the human accomplishment that justifies um, even the suffering of one um, worst case scenario type life. One person with um, you know ALS or one person with um, you know elephant man disease. They're out there right now. Huge giant tumors living horrid lives. Um, not able to enjoy the simplest of human pleasures. Um, just horrid existences. You know, so you, you show me what, what, what is the, the grand, brilliant thing that justifies it. There isn't anything. Nothing. We're not even made of gold. I mean, we are nothing. We're stupid, wanting, um, grasping, fucking, uh, you know, educated flatworms. With what wing shafts. They're eating a burger wing. Like in a canoe in the first of it. Yeah, they're scavenging, right. And their usual meal is what? Some little dead joey, you know. <laughs> little bits left over. Is his entrails. Yeah. Looks like you've got a big bit of burger in. Yeah. Those birds would just laugh in your face at the idea that life is nothing but suffering and living in the world. They have a marvelous life. And then, yeah, and it's until they're the one infested, fettered, until they're the ones who've got maggots in their wing or some other kind of thing that happens to them and they slowly die. They forage on the ground or something like that until they're finally hunted down by a fox or something else and it's their last day on earth. And for what? For what? For what accomplishment? Oh, that's right. To merely run in a stupid wheel, to whap the stupid spokes in a stupid wheel, to, 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 to doggy paddle with their head above the water and get nowhere. To spin around in circles till something finally pushes you all the way down. Yeah, and you're going to call that an accomplishment. Why? Yeah, I don't know. Because you've got fucking, you know, DNA is stroking your, your anus. Enjoy yourselves. Yeah, so even though uh, I like the anti-natalist, I, uh, I understand where they're coming from. I don't agree with them. I, I think it's not a coherent philosophy. Yeah, well, guess what, fuckball? All right, them's fighting words, all right? <laughs> I mean, really, I don't think you're uh, in a position to decide what's coherent and what isn't coherent. I don't think you've qualified your your, your opinion sufficiently. I think all you've done is slander anti-natalists. You've attempted to call them weak, or attempted to call them, um, you know, because oh, they're paying so much attention to just point zero zero not 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 zero zero percent of life experience, and everybody can trivialize that. Like I said, I mean, if we add up all your orgasms, we're probably not going to get to what <laughs> six hours. It's a cancer of despair, and uh, I think it's pretty well. I think, I think, I think, yeah, I, unfortunately you don't logically demonstrate or argue or prove or present any factual anything. You just say, I think. Well, fuck you. The great anti-natalism is underpinned by atheism, and atheism is a belief that there is no God. It's, um, which, which is perfectly rational. I mean, there's absolutely not one shred of evidence that any intelligence designed life on Earth or anything else in the universe. There's no intelligent components of the basic machinery. It's not functioned or arranged in any kind of intelligent manner. And the only uh, thing that uh, created the uh, mock intelligence, and it's mock, um, was the replication of a DNA molecule because that obliged matter to create oh. weapons, and one of the weapons was intelligence, by circumstance. That's why we have intelligence, not because it's a great thing to have, but because it's a good weapon in a gladiator war. 
That's it. That's its bastard <coughs> origin. Now, you want to find God somewhere in that crap? Then you're qualifiable, in my opinion, as an idiot. There's no evidence that makes you an idiot. Clearly different from agnosticism, which is no belief in any God. Atheism is a belief that there's no God, and because there's no God, there can't be any point to life. And because there's no God, no, no point to life, the there fuck? can't be any you know, karmic payback or cosmic scores or anything. No point. So atheists tend to find more... <laughs> yeah, cosmic, cosmic, whatever, payback. Yeah, they, yeah, there's no justice built into the universe. There's no fairness. There's no dignity. There's no mm. grace. There's no real respect oh. for beauty. There's no nothing that we, through our cultured intelligence, through the best of our intelligence, could define as a value. Is it all respected by the universe? And that's a rather dismal, sad, and pitifully ugly reality to just benignly shove up your ass and accept. I say no. Till that penis is clean, it ain't going in my butt. So are you. It's a cause for despair. Um, personally, I had kids due to my own conceit to the effect that my DNA is good for living here, right? And he said, yeah, due to your own conceit. So you're a grown man, and you could, you still haven't gotten over your own conceit. And now you are, are this conceited enough to sit there and be lecturing other people on what you think uh, with no evidence. So what does that make you? Oh, I know. Bogus. That's what it makes you. Bogus. You tell him, Gary. When your father's grandfather showed up around here, my day and I was been living within 50 miles of where I'm sitting at the moment. Yeah, well, who the fuck cares? I, could, I mean, I could say my DNA is doing the same thing in the sense that I have sisters that all had kids. And theoretically, their DNA is only 50% removed from my DNA, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I mean, theoretically, I have a kind of child. Um... But it's bullshit. Who the fuck cares? Why the fuck would I think that's important? My DNA? I mean, you really do that thing, do you? You really waste time thinking about your DNA? Jeez, that's how, how enlightened. And there's not too many people on the planet who can say that anymore. Um, I know that there's too many people on the planet, and I know that most people are selfish, deluded, psychotics, and they're headed down a silly track. And I like the first one. Yeah, and uh, you'd like to just say, keep it up. That's all you're saying. You're just saying, yeah, keep that moron ball rolling. Because that, that's the only thing that's going to happen here, you know. Like I said, the smart people have already figured out it's a stupid game, and they're not playing it, all right? It's only the morons who are doing the reproducing. So if you educate the morons oh, at all, your game is over. Reproduce. Okay, it's over. Someday. All we, if Maybe. we eliminated this, the... the, the the dumbest 20% of the population, the, the fucking human race would die out. That's the reality, shithead. I've raised my kids not to be fuckwits, and I'm pleased that I've had kids. And I think that my yeah. child... Yeah, well, I think, I'm pleased, I blah blah, I, it's all about you, isn't it? Yeah, well that's the difference between me and you. It's, to me, it's not about me. We have to it's solve about the future. It's about what's going to happen. Your to problem, Gary. We're going to live in this fucking shit world. We do. All right? And we have to should, solve. Should we allow people to just keep rolling a ball up a fucking Sithicus Hill to accomplish absolutely nothing when it just ends up rolling back down over precious things? It's just stupid and idiotic. If you can't do the fucking thing right, you don't fucking goddamn do it. <coughs> we'll fix it. Humanity, as a whole, I list the possible health of individuals. Because my kids are not stupid and they're not fuckers. Yeah, and so says every motherfucking idiotic moron, all right, on earth, right? Everybody's kids are all the special little fuckers. And you fall for that one. You're supposed to be an intelligent guy and you fall for something that fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, well, well, because they got my DNA... And they talk funny like me. I mean, what other, what, what else they got going for them? And what makes them so special compared to all the other kids? Everybody else is a fuckwit, but your kids aren't. Yeah, right. And uh, that's one reason for having kids. Is if you think that um, make something better than yourself. 
Yeah, well, it's got to be like, you know, the words that are in the dumbass book, you know, the words that dumbasses believe in. Conceit is one of them. I mean, it's about as illogical, a useless a human um, disposition that there is. Nothing good comes of it. It's absolute crap. And here you are saying um, that, that, you know, that, that it's a word you, you want to make friends with. It's a word I find ugly, okay? It's up there with anus and maggot and pus is the word conceit. It's something to be avoided. Something to hate about yourself, not something to applaud. One of the funny things is that the light of spiritual advancement, according to the religious beliefs that I hold. Well, really, who the fuck cares, right? Yeah. According to the cartoons I've seen, <laughs> that way, according to the fables, um, whatever, on my arm. Uh, you know, so so this is this. Somebody's supposed to take this crap seriously. Well, why don't I just read <laughs> bubblegum wrappers? I mean, why don't I just go on the street and find any old asshole and say, "What do you believe?" One of the best ways of spiritually advancing yourself is to have no kids, right, and dedicate your life to the generation you already here. Yeah, are the one that's going to live in the future. But again. The whole point would, of antinatalism isn't just about dedicating your life and sacrificing. Like I said, I'm, I didn't sacrifice. It wasn't antinatalism that made me non-reproductive. It was the fact that I saw absolutely no functional purpose in it. It could only satisfy an ego drive, and at best, for me personally, and at worst, it's just opening a door to huge, preposterous, insane liability for which I would be responsible. I don't know why the fuck I would bother with that. I mean, I could. I was. I guess like you people really are just too stupid, right? You can't even think ten days ahead. I mean, not only was I afraid of birth defects. I mean, starting off with somebody who was broken. My sister had, uh, you know, cleft lip, um, and. Um, you know, not the end of the world, but I mean, we know birth defects go deeper than that. They can be a lot worse than that. I know you now, if that doesn't you. scare you a little, just starting off, and then you got to worry about all the fucking bullshit that can happen to a kid, all the sh the shit, the shit that just happens, and you got to be some kind of egomaniacal asshole who thinks what you're going to be lucky that somehow when you roll the dice that they're going to it's going to be lucky dice. And, and that's supposed to be applauded well, as the intelligent, reasonable perspective. Year. I'm going to be lucky. No, well, that's well, called year. nonsense, you fuck. Well, so the early natalists probably look pretty good in the eyes of God. Sure. Yeah. yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> if God has eyes, I'm poking them the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. God needs his fucking testicles shoved into his eye sockets. <laughs> no. Okay. So now, either I have to get up, or I can talk to you, or I can talk to you and get up. What? <sighs> I've uh, fallen asleep many times just watching your videos. Uh, waiting for you to present. Oh. 
think a lot more about what I am and uh, what's going on inside of me and what's going on outside. Kind of curious what's going on inside of you. And, uh, and, and what you've seen, what you've experienced, what you've gone through. Thank you for making me stronger. Certainly not. Certainly not a theist. I never have been. Ever. I'm a fan of science. some interest in the subject. How about this? I mean, you say consumption, reproduction, Cannibalism and addiction. Okay. Consumption. What are we consuming? Cannibalism. Right? Isn't that what this is? gotten to the point where the majority of it, the majority, not all of it, but the majority of it is accustomed to getting its nutrients from other living organisms. Um, but it, it all works its way down to the microorganisms. Now, the microorganisms that are not you know, consuming other life forms, they are taking it. They're, they're getting their nutrients from non-living things. So... Not all of it is cannibals. Not all of it. Last time I checked, there was about, or it was a, I read that there, there are about 180 billion tons, I think it was. That could be a few factors off. Of biomass. Four billion years ago, zero. Zero. Not a drop, not a gram, not a cell. And uh, just probably, right? We'll go with that. The 
number, whatever the number may be, could be 3.8 billion, might even be 5 billion. At this point, we don't know. Um, I've wondered, I wondered if life um, may have started before the planets finished, or before the uh, planetoids that formed this planet and put it together. Um, if life may not have started on one of them, um, perhaps even on the on the moon before it may have collided with the Earth and then formed the moon that we know today from from the Earth. If if that happened, I know a lot of people aren't really sure about that, but. I think something along those lines may happen. I don't think it was captured. And, uh, I don't think it formed at the same time. There were collisions. Things. Um, but the forming at the same time could be part of that. Anyhow, I mean, uh, I guess Gary. My, my thing is, for the majority of my life, I, I've never cared about uh, the concerns of other people at the present. Um, when I started figuring things out, when I started realizing um, about past and future um, I lost a lot of interest in the present um, so I mean I, I don't know study, I study a lot of science, I read some science fiction, I watched some science fiction movies, um, you know, I'm a big fan of futurists, people like Michio Kaku, and, uh, you know, Isaac Asimov, even, I mean, science fiction is, like, futurism. Futurism is more based in, uh, in the present state of things, I suppose. There, there is a connection drawn there. Um, and then you've got, um, you know, people claim to be, I don't know, I don't know what you call, like Nostradamus. Um, obviously, I don't think that he... for sure um, but when I was a teenager when I was young and uh, I was also studying things like chaos theory at the same time and uh, fractals and patterns and I was detecting all sorts of patterns uh, throughout history of my life and Um, I wound up getting hospitalized. Uh, this was a um, time of desert storm. You, I know you're, you're older. So you remember it. I assume not. Yeah, of course you do. But um, at the time, I was watching a lot, a lot of television. Um, I was young. I was watching news. I was watching Discovery Channel. Um, not... And occasionally Comedy Central, but... And, uh, a little bit of MTV. But... Not... Um... Yeah, not, not popular television. No interest. No interest. Yes, I mean popular. Kind of popular.
the Discovery Channel is popular. I mean, not, not sitcoms and things like that. I'm still, I'm not interested in it. I, I don't ever want to be. Never get into it. Uh, it's just kind of a waste of time. So, I spent most of my time learning and uh, thinking about the future and uh, wondering. You know, I don't really buy into the whole Nostradamus thing. I think it's kind of like, uh, you know, biblical information, religious information. by the people and uh, you know interpreted differently at different times you know like a, a lion in a cage of gold um, I don't know what he said S -s -s struck of iron and then, then somebody can come along and say well the lion was this particular king and the cage of gold was his helmet and the piece of iron was the sword you know and then it could just be I mean he could just make so many things like that and put so many times on them I think he'd even communicate in different languages like he wrote in Spanish and German and French or something like that in English I don't know so the the words even kind of had mixed up meanings there too but that's that's not the point um, the point is the patterns I don't, I don't know if you've ever done it before feeling where you know you know what's happening you build up a lot of confidence I'm not usually a confident person I mean I I'm confident in not knowing like uh, there's a lot of things I don't know about and a lot of things that uh, are fairly irrelevant to what I want to know even even though I love all of this I love being alive. I know you'll, you'll disagree. I hope you do. Um, because there would be no challenge, right? such a thing I don't I don't know what that is I really don't if it has a definition I may be using it wrong um, but there, there must be another addition to that not just pronatalist but also um, progressive you know um, maybe I want to make life better, um, but first I have to. We have to understand it. And yeah, that that guy was kind of right in saying that. Yeah, we need to know the numbers so that we can better understand it. But yeah, I don't know what religion he said he was. But if he's religious, can't even take him seriously. Just can't. It's a waste of time. I mean, he may he may know some numbers or something, but at some point, he'll just go off, and uh, you, you'll just be lost. Um, you may 
may see me like that in some way if you're if you're really as anti-natalist as you say you are or or you could just be coming out as that and you know you you're presenting uh, the problem you're I mean the problem like you could say the problem has been presented from the beginning but you know it's Excuse me, it's cold in, cold in here. Can't really afford much. Heat. <coughs> um, so, patterns. I didn't really finish that thought. tried to bring it to people's attention back then back in the early 90s um, my mother my friends um, the only thing that my mother cared about is that I did my schoolwork and didn't shoplift and uh, didn't beat up my younger brother she didn't even really care about the me beating up my younger brother thing the only time the only time she cared about anything was when um, other people told her that I was doing something wrong or not doing what they wanted, like schoolwork. So she would pretty much just ask them, what should I do? And, uh, you know back to the uh, situation desert storm desert shield um, I had uh, pretty much every channel you know every news channel and I would cycle through them and just continuously gain perspectives and uh, study you know patterns like, like stock markets and stuff that's maybe where I got the most insight was uh, studying that. Although I don't, never really picked up on a pattern. I did notice, you know, some things going up and down at different times. Um, that uh, we were going to be attacked um, that the United States was was not good and that's pretty much what it boils down to to what we're doing to the world and I see friends were doing it, most of their family wasn't doing it, but in a way, uh, in a way, a lot of the adults were, the people with the jobs, were, were feeding, uh, were, were feeding the machine, um, that is sending invaders in other countries, and getting in between people and picking a side and wiping the other people out. You know? Like, 
two kids fighting at high school, and uh, you just jump in between, and you kill 10% of one of the kids. Yeah. That's not cool. But, you know, maybe not 10%, maybe even 5%. You know, maybe just cut off the front of the bully's foot. Or, you know, cut off some of his fingers. That's what, that's what we're doing. That's what we do. We go in and we, we kill. Not only do we kill, um, oh, it's cold. Um, we change things. We, ch we change their futures. I'm not saying anything that you've ever... I'm not saying anything new, am I? Well... I don't know. I do have some ideas. And I would like to run them by you. Because I see you as... Uh, one of the biggest challenges in the world. You represent something, you know. You represent a challenge. I do like challenge. Uh, I also like cooperation. So, if I'm going to tolerate you, um, I'm going to have to interpret any relationship that develops as cooperation. No. Uh, you know, because you're you're going to make things better for me. And uh, I don't know. If I'll make things better for you, I'll I'll try. I'll try. Um, I won't stop people from reproducing and, uh, I won't discourage people from reproducing I mean maybe not maybe I'll maybe I'll change but for now um, I see problems and and you bring up a lot of those problems. My my problems are big problems. My problems are problems that other people, um, you know, they don't talk about very often. You know, but you do. You talk about the same problems that I talk about. The problems of life. I see you as trapped, you know, in that body. And I see myself at times as the whole universe. You, you included, you know, just a representative, just a mouth of the universe. You're a mouth of the universe. So am I. That's it, man. We'll just fucking universe talking to itself. Fucking. I, I don't know if you fuck. I, I have fucked occasionally. It's, it's fun, isn't it? Yeah. So, you're 
four main four things um, I've, I've heard you say the points um, I don't know if you've solved any of these or if you still um, repeat them but consumption reproduction cannibalism and addiction um, cons consumption I think is is a good thing when we're consuming the non-living universe and converting it into the living universe. Um, reproduction, I see, is a good thing because we are creating more life. Um, and I do feel that life will be getting more and more complex. Um, or it's possible um, and, and fairly likely that uh, it, it could become duller uh, once we realize the limits of the resources you know for now we're, li we're life living on life it's cannibalism you know even smoking this tobacco it's a dead plant Coffee beans, caffeine, um, no, nothing in there. Um, it's just tea, I think. But same thing, right? I mean, it's fucking, it's a dead plant. And uh, it's been harvested. Yeah, life. But, <laughs> um, there was a time, I think it was about, 14 years ago uh, the first time that I wondered really what what life is and uh, and how do you distinguish life from non-life what's really live and uh, some people might say it's simple if it's got DNA and it, it's live no DNA it's not um, it's it's not that simple That's just DNA. It's just a molecule. A self-replicating molecule and it's not even it's not even self-replicating. Obviously. Because of the difference. All the differences. So it doesn't just replicate itself, it changes. Right? It's changed for the last four billion years. And it will change. Okay, you need to you need to understand that. I I kind of want to shout at you right now. I kind of want to swear and curse and and tell you how fucking stupid you are, because you don't take that into account. The life is going to change. Okay, it's going to change. It's not going to be this way forever. Especially not now with technology. Not now that we're here. You know, and I can kind of hear you. I've watched enough of your videos and gauge your responses to people. For now, this is this is it, right? For now, this is it. But this is just now. It's this has been going on for four billion years. It will go on for another four billion years. Um, Antinatalism will never get off the ground. Okay, sorry. It's it's a great idea for challenging. And who? Yeah, who am I? Who am I to say it won't? Who am I to... I'm, I'm the universe. I'm telling you. Um, I'm not going to stop this. Okay. I've been doing this for a billion years. More. Four billion. Um, and it's not going to end. So... I appreciate you.
I really do. You know, you focus on the problems. And, uh, you place a lot of emphasis on them. And you challenge people. something that we're definitely really lacking um, are, are people who, who really challenge the, the universe itself. That idea anti-natalism idea, all that, um, your solution to the problem by ending the problem, it's not going to work. Sorry. Um, the amount of suffering, it may go up a little. It may go down a little throughout your and mine, our measly conscious existence. Um, but it's not, it's not going to go up overall anymore. I mean, there will be more life. Um, sorry. I'm sorry. There will be more life, more suffering, and more death. More of all of it. You can paint any little picture of any little piece of life on Earth. And it doesn't really faze me. Not that much. I mean... Shit. I think you're, you'd be talking to the wrong person to do that. Sorry. will get better. No. I've come up with a lot of solutions to to your problems. Um, I don't have your problems listed. Um, I haven't gone through all your videos. You know, a few hundred. But you have never presented a problem that I cannot solve. Just by imagining it. Same way you just imagine antinatalism. And imagine ending life. I imagine solving the problem. you would laugh. You know, I've heard you laugh. I, I know when you laugh. I know when you smile. I know when you snort. I know when you chuckle. I know, I know when you giggle. I imagine your response to this video, if you do choose to respond to it, if you bother watching the whole thing, or, or 
watching at least the second half. We'll be, uh, to bring up a lot of little examples. Yeah. Or just, or just sum up the whole thing. You know, everything dies. Well, not everything has to die anymore. You know that there's there's profit in death. And there's power in profit. And that's that's one of the problems we can deal with for now. And uh, I watched a couple of your videos where you mentioned you know, the the Occupy movement. don't see you or hear you talking too much about the, the global revolution you know happening all over the world but obviously for it to happen here in America it's pretty significant especially in the United States so I'm glad um, It could, you know, weaken countries. Other countries could take advantage of the United States of their time of weakness. So it would be in the United States' best interest of the powers that be in the United States to. satisfy its own people. Or, like I've, I've said before, um, the, the 1% here in the United States could just jump ship and uh, move to, I don't know, move into the, the Burj. Khalifa. I think that's in the United Arab Emirates. It's the you know, tallest building in the world. Just finished construction four years ago. Fucking huge. Fucking huge. If you've never seen it before, you should look at it. It's a giant. It's a giant anthill. Giant. Yeah, I like to think of it as a Tower of Babel. Um. But whatever you want to think of it as, it's up like twenty twenty billion dollars, and not only that, but a whole city. Even more impressive is the entire city around it. All the buildings that have sprung up. If they're preparing for something, they know there's going to be going to be a huge shift. Of, uh, the economy labor <coughs> people people um, culture civilization um, I don't know if it's if it's intended for uh, int only for the Arab world you know, or people from all over the world they're planning to move in to all these buildings. It's going to happen. I don't know. Maybe it's not going to happen. But we could stop it. Do we want to stop it? I don't know. I, don't know. I am both apathetic and empathetic to everyone and uh, everything that I know of. It's, it's a problem I've had throughout my life, just going back and forth, you know. I'll see your side, and, uh, and then I'll see 
And the side that I built up over time, the, the uh, know, it's like, uh, it's so much more than just pro-natalism. It's, uh, it's life, everything. I envision a future, perhaps, um, I don't know, I don't know how long in the, in the future, maybe 10 billion years, um, where at least, at least, uh, everything, like every, every body, every planet, um, you know, nearby, at least, from Earth, let's, let's say every star, every star, when you go outside, um, is within a, a couple thousand light years, and we don't, we don't see anything beyond that with our naked eye, except for the Andromeda Galaxy, um, but, other than that, the rest of the stars, yeah, they're all really close by, um, maybe a few, are beyond 2,000 light years. Uh, most of them are within hundreds of light years. And uh, I think you're, you're pretty familiar with astronomy. I imagine you are. And you know the size of the galaxy. It's about 100,000 light years. So only, what we see is only a little bit. But imagine all the planets around all of those stars. All of them around us. beings may not, not know death. Um, they may set their civilizations up entirely to sustain life at all costs. No death. Um, suffering can easily become a thing of the past. we still need pain to to protect ourselves mm. to be monitored we can never experience pain we can leave the monitoring up to computers mm. yeah There's nothing that this system does that uh, is in any way bad for it. It can't be remedied with realistic technology. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any sort of chemical that breaks down, DNA telomeres getting shorter, just stop them. You know, we need, right now we need to keep up the division because we shed so much, so we constantly repair ourselves that process mm -hmm. DNA gets shorter and shorter and eventually stops stops working gets to a point where uh, it won't replicate anymore so, so there's a couple ways that we can go about solving that problem can make some sort of, um, like a, something
something to repair the telomeres, um, a molecule that puts, puts the ends of the DNA back on. reach a state where we were essentially immortal. Now that might be disturbing for you, especially when you consider things suffering. You know, at that point, death can be a choice. Um, Right now, it's not a choice. You know, it may seem like a choice. You could live 100 years if you tried hard enough. 120, 130 maybe. Um, just with the technology and things that are available, with proper chemicals, um, avoiding improper chemicals. But, you know, death will be a choice. Some people, and we'll choose not to die. Um, there will be contests. Holders. Uh, humans. Thousands of years old. And uh, it's kind of disturbing. Um, to think. But there may exist now. Um, we may very well have that technology. I, I doubt it. I would think people, somebody would know about it. Somebody would leak that information. It would get out to the public somehow. But, no. No talk of it, nothing. So. Maybe, maybe I'm the first. Doubt it, but. It'll happen. Life will get longer and longer. For humans, we can do it for other animals. Um, I, I talked with a friend about you know, lions and gazelles and about how lions have to kill. And, and you mentioned about lions and their cubs. And it's just in their nature, right? Well, if we really wanted to, we could change that. I mean, if we really wanted to. You know, first we could do it on a single spot. Maybe it, maybe on a, another planet. Maybe on a desert island. Maybe on a reserve. But somebody somewhere would convince people to allow them to genetically modify um, you know, lions and things. And, uh, we'll just take that out of them. We'll stop them from killing, killing their cubs, killing gazelles. Um, I don't know what you, what you think about that. Take that out of nature. We'll just take it out. Really. Killing. Um, and what we could insert instead would be something akin to, uh, like photosynthesis, um, a chemical process, or maybe even a, a technological process, but chemical process where we get our energy from raw minerals, water, sunlight, or electricity, 
Um, yeah, something like that. Something uh, physical. for now. I'm, I'm sorry you won't see it in your lifetime. I'm sorry. I won't either. It doesn't bother me, but obviously. Obviously you're bothered. And I don't want you to stop being bothered. I want you to keep, keep going. Not enough people are aware. You know, even if it's just one person a week. Keep responding, keep talking, keep keep going out there, you know. Pull people into the conversation. Get them to start something up. You know. And maybe through me, you'll come up with another argument, you know. And I hope you don't just uh, wishy washy whatever. Futuristic nonsense or you know wishful thinking. I mean, it, it really beats anything else. Now, one of the things you said, well, what's the reason? What's the reason for life? Well, um, I've heard you smile. I mean, I've heard you laugh and seen you smile and, and you know, American idols. There'll be more there'll be more of the rest of that shit. All that distraction for for some beings. You know, everything. There'll always be some sort of distraction. challenge as much as we used to be. There is going to come a time when we will be challenged. You know, given given the potential for uh, for another another life form, another origin of life in this universe. speculate that it'll be a lot like this. Um, could be far more complicated, could be far more complex. It, uh, it, it could be something we have not even imagined yet. does occur. I don't know about you, but I would like Earth, a life from Earth, to be in a better position. imagine 
what your response is. I, I really hope you respond to this whole video. That would mean a lot to me. It may upset me a little bit. It's fine. I'm weak. I am. I mean, compared to what I could be. I know I am. But I know you are too. I would wait, you know, come back in, in 10 billion years or so, come back, um, yeah, yeah, be the, you know, like Schopenhauer or whatever, I don't know what his fucking name was, but, whatever, um, yeah, whatever it is, um, it makes people like you, and I imagine there's a lot of people um, probably more more intelligent than you that have this um, you know, figured out more than you do um, about how to how to just you know end end all the problems by never creating something that causes the problems but to me to me life is just part of the universe I, mean, I, I don't even see myself as an individual a lot of times I just I don't I just see myself as part of the universe you know like the wind or the water or the waves you know just a really complicated pattern stuff. And not even that complicated. I mean, complicated less now, but yeah, certainly not as complicated as a lot of the other things going on. I thought you might like fire. I like it. It's interesting. Simple. Yeah. So are we. So is life. So are your problems. So. That's about the end of this video. In the future, there's going to be people like you that have a lot more figured out than uh, any human on earth today ever could. And uh, they'll come up with better problems um, and better.
their solutions, but other people will continue, other life forms will continue. So, yeah, you can, you can imagine stopping it. And, uh, I really hope you don't ever persuade, like, a uh, genetic engineer to, uh, virus or anything, sort of orchestrate some sort of wipe all life thing out. Um, I don't think you will. So, yeah, I hope you can see that there, there's... There is a good in life. You just have to solve the problems. I mean, you see these things as problems. Cannibalism. Addi addiction. Addiction. It is a bit of a problem because it can be taken advantage of. You know. I mean, there are, so there are plenty of things that we're addicted to. some pretty long videos, so you may enjoy this as a sort of conversation. awareness for the, the things that concern you. I disagree with your solution and uh, I disagree with your uh, perspective. But I also agree with it. I, I'm, I'm glad. I, I know what it'll do. care more, you know, hopefully, so, keep it up, and, uh, I'm sorry we have to die.